Hello everyone. So I'm going to do, I'm going to react to a video. It says want to live in North Carolina, and it says ten reasons to move to North Carolina. So let's see how it you know. Let's get here's an ad. What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to World According to Briggs and a look at the Tar Heel State, North Carolina. North Carolina was established in 1729 and is one of the original 13 colonies. There's no concrete explanation on how it got its nickname, the Tar Heel State, but most think it stems back from the mid 18th century when North Carolina was the leading producer of tar. I've also read that it was because tar used on shipbuilding would get on the heels of the barefoot ship laborers who were slaves at the time. Who knows? I like all the stories and urban legends that surround that one. They're all pretty interesting. North Carolina's right here is a southern state, even though it has the <laughs> word north in it. Now, I've said that before, and I still get emails that people say it's not a southern state. Google it, please, before you leave a comment. And I want to give you a word of advice. Go to North Carolina run into one of those old timers and tell them that North Carolina is not a southern state, you could lose your front teeth, just letting you know. Now they're not that bad. North Carolina people are pretty, pretty decent people, but that is kind of stupid if you say that to someone. They're going to look at you weird at least. Definitely North Carolina is a very popular state these days. Charlotte, Winston-Salem, Raleigh-Durham, and Asheville are all seeing around 20% population growth or more since the 2010 census. So why are so many people moving to North Carolina? I'm going to give you 10 reasons right now. Okay. Number 10, a quality education. Yeah, from first grade to getting out of college. They have quality schools across the board in North Carolina. Oh, yeah, the SAT school. score is above the national average, and you'll find good public schools, charter, magnet, private schools, whatever you're looking for, you're going to find it here for yourself or for your kids. You get up in the Triangle area, which is Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. You have mm -hmm. University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. You have Duke up there, yep, and yep. you have North Carolina State University. Yep. They have some other smaller ones up there. There is mm -hmm. really good universities in this area of North Carolina. Bet. Fun Number fun. nine, it's a good place to get your drink on. <laughs> the beer scene here has been growing in the past 10 years. With Asheville and Charlotte becoming respectable brewery hubs, the entire state has 320 breweries, and they also say they have the largest number of craft breweries in the South. Now, it's not just the Where? beer. Look at the wine. This place is home to Mother Vine, the oldest cultivated grapevine in the country that dates back to 1584, and they have more than 175 wineries. And it's not just alcohol. This is the birthplace of several American classics like Pepsi Cola, Cheer Wine. Cheer Wine, if you've ever had Cheer Wine, it's a cherry yeah. flavored soft drink. Yeah. It's got a lot of sugar in it. It's like 42 Ooh, grams of it, sugar it, per can. So, so I, I watched this video on um, a, a YouTuber I used to watch and stuff like that. They, they sang or whatever and went on tour. And so they came to North Carolina and somebody from North Carolina gave them a Cheer Wine. They thought it was beer. Like, they thought it was beer. And, you know, they were younger and you can't drink that stuff. He was like, this is beer? He was like, no. He was like, oh, okay. I was like, nope, it's not beer. It's a little sweet, but it's good. Number eight, the climate. <sighs> North Carolina is a four-season state. Yes. You'll never feel like you're just stuck in one weather pattern, like Southern California, where it seems um, to be like summer nine months a year, and then you get uh, fall for like a couple days. And a lot of the other states in the South only seem to have summer. I mean, that's not true, but it just sure does seem like it sometimes. You get the beautiful changing of the colors in fall. The sun yes. still peaks through that's in winter, really but pretty. you can also get a nice blanket of snow. It's not crazy snow like Minnesota, Wisconsin. Yeah, you Minnesota. can get up in the hills and it can be, but it's not terrible. It doesn't get as humid as Mississippi and Alabama, Louisiana, and things like that. It gets a touch of it, but it's just kind of a happy medium. But like I said, you get it all four all seasons. Over the place. Seven. Number seven, the economy. North Carolina was doing great before the pandemic and hasn't done terrible during it compared to some of the other states. It is considered to be one of the best places to live and work in the United States due to its solid job market in the education system, Bad. technology jobs. That's during normal times. Like I said, they're still doing better than most, but during normal times, they were doing great. North Carolina has one of the healthiest economies in the country, not to mention a highly educated and skilled workforce. It makes it easy to see why college graduates and professionals with families and stuff like to settle down here. Okay. Some of the Fortune 500 companies that call this state home include Bank America, Duke Energy, Lowe's, Honeywell International, 
and advanced auto parts. That's just naming some of them. They got a bunch more too. Charlotte, if you just want to look at Charlotte, they're the second largest banking center in the nation. So if you're into banking, finance, not a bad place to live. Okay. Number six. six, the great outdoors. North Carolina has it all. Well, maybe not a desert or a frozen tundra, but they have the Atlantic beaches on the east, plenty of woodland areas, and the Blue Ridge Mountains on the west. If you get a chance, hike Whitewater Falls. It's the oh, highest I waterfall wait, on the entire the East fail. Coast. There are over 250 waterfalls in the Tar Heel State. That's a lot. Oregon, I think we got them beat, but mountain biking is big here. So is hiking, Ooh, whitewater rafting, dope. boating, and kayaking. There's tons of fishing and hunting in North Carolina. If that's your thing, they got plenty of it. But hiking and mountain biking are really big in North Carolina. I will tell you one thing about the coastline in North Carolina. I was never impressed. I mean, it's not equal to Florida or even parts of Georgia and South Carolina. It's nice. It's just not as nice as some of the other ones on the East Coast. I've At least that's been my been experience. So I'm sure you could point out a couple areas that are great yeah, and stuff like that, but I've been to the shoreline more than a few times in North Carolina and yeah, it was never that that good, but Aww. it's there. That sky looks really Number five. Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> if you looked at North Carolina like a date, she's a cheap date that doesn't act like a but cheap like, date. Mississippi, on the other North hand, Carolina, is a cheap date that acts like a crazy person that scenes. will drink you under the okay. table and sell your kidney after you pass know. out. The overall cost living index for the state okay. of North Carolina is 5% lower than the national average. That doesn't sound like a lot, but like I said in the I Wyoming video, know. that's not much when it's a state nobody wants that's to great. live in. North Carolina is a nice state and people definitely want to live there. The cost of groceries and utilities are a touch lower than the national average. They aren't mm, dirt cheap like really you find pretty. in West Virginia, Arkansas, or Mississippi, but for a nice place to live, it's really not that bad. Number four, things to do. Not everyone wants to go mountain biking, hiking, camping, fishing, or kayaking. Some people like to seek their entertainment elsewhere, like sitting down and watching something. North Carolina has you covered. This state is big on sports. They got the Carolina Panthers, the Hurricanes, and the NHL, and then they have the Charlotte Hornets and basketball. They also have other sports that are professional like lacrosse and okay. minor league base. So my phone ran out of storage. I'm recording this, the rest of this, on this camera that I have. So hopefully it catches all of it because I don't know how much film, I mean, storage I have on that SIM card, so. And if the, the quality is not so great, you know, this camera is all right. So we'll see. All those things. That's just for the sports fans. And then they have motorsports. This is a place that's big into NASCAR. I want to do that. It races every single year. And a truckload of NASCAR teams are headquartered in North Carolina. After you get past all the sports and all that nonsense, oh, you have boy. zoos, museums, and historical sites. A lot of history went down in North Carolina, from pirates like Blackbeard to the Wright brothers making their first flight there. They have a nice aviation museum. And there's a lot of military history that went on in this state. It's worth taking a look. Number three, great health care. Now, I've been making oh, these really? lists for about five years now. Weird. When I just traveled around the country and did things, I wasn't researching things like crime or health care. These days, anytime I look up stats about healthcare, North Carolina is always towards the top of those lists. I never knew why, and then I started digging into yeah, it. And yeah. I did a healthcare video not too long ago, and I think three of the cities out of the 10 were in North Carolina. It is home to several nationally ranked hospitals and world-renowned academic medical centers. Duke University Hospital in Durham is one of the most well-known teaching hospitals in the country. Nationally, they are ranked ninth for children's specialties and 10th for adult specialties. They have some really good hospitals like University of North Carolina, they have a couple hospitals, Carolina Medical Center, and Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center. Like I said, they got a bunch more, those are some of the big ones. So if you got a bum hip or a chick from Mississippi sells your kidney, yeah, maybe North Carolina is a good option for you. What? Wiggly wiggly. <laughs> it's an ad. Mobile clothing consumption has doubled in the last 15 years. Oh, hey, it's little... We can change that. Okay, so of course that wasn't the same ad, but I just thought it was a coincidence how I screen recorded this off the Mac or whatever. Separate from when I watched it, because I was in, not in class, but I was close to getting in class. But a commercial still came up at the same exact time. I just thought that was a coincidence. Jaden. Jaden Smith. When we buy better, we can wear longer. Levi's. Haha. -ha. 
Number two, affordable housing. Now, this one's kind of rough because normally I can break down a city and just kind of tell you what it is. I'll give you the median home cost for the whole state, which is $187,000, which is the median home value, compared to nationally, $240,000. So, kind of gives you an idea that they're a little bit lower. I normally like to tell people realistically what they're looking at, but since this oh, is a big state, it's kind of hard to do that. I'd be yeah, here for an houses. hour trying to explain all that to you. So what I'm gonna tell you is I looked at Raleigh. Raleigh is big on duplexes. You can get a nice duplex built within the last decade duplex. or so for about $150,000. Really? Sure, you get downtown or in one of the nice gated communities or something like that, it's gonna be a lot higher. I heard it's but I to saw buy tons a of nice livable duplexes and townhomes home. for around $150,000, $160,000. You can get nice older homes in the suburbs around Raleigh for about $220,000. These are nice, ready to move in, I would just decent be scared neighborhoods. To try and share my Charlotte's house similar to that, maybe a little bit more expensive, but that's kind of what you're looking at through the whole state. Now, you don't start quoting me prices on some rundown neighborhood that you used to live in or some gated community where the homes are million dollars. They have plenty of those too, but <laughs> you know, they got a dock, a boat ramp, and everything else like that. It's just an affordable place to buy a home. Raleigh and Charlotte being the largest cities have a relatively low rent price as well when you compare them to other similar southern cities. They're only 2% higher than the national average, which beats places like Atlanta at 7% and Miami at 8% above the national average. Now, if you really want to compare it to the rest of the country, the houses look are at the close. most expensive places to rent, if that you is too look close. at Los Angeles, oh it's 35%. New York City is 37% higher than the national average, okay, and San Francisco is like, knocking you know. it out of the park that's with really 72%. Close. Sucks to be them. That is... There's no All right, before we get to number one, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that little bell so you know when we're uploading again. Leave me a comment, give the video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed that's it. That's dope. Alright, on to number one. And number one, it's the people. It's the people uh -huh. and hospitality. When you think of North Carolina, you think of that Southern charm. They have tons of it there. Every single time I've been there, it's one of the first things I noticed. People are polite, they're nice. And Where did you I go? the disclaimer, there are some a-holes there also. That's everywhere. Every place has them. But I'm talking on average, they're just known for their hospitality and being decent people. Oh, There's a couple other places in the country that are like that. Wisconsin's one of them. And West Virginia, for all its problems, the people are amazing. They're very welcoming in North Carolina. That's one thing you will see on my comment sections. If you bring up Wyoming, I just did Wyoming, you have a ton of people going, we're full, don't move here. Colorado's thing, like, we're full, don't move here. Idaho, don't move here, we're all full. We don't need no Californians in your politics. North Carolina, they're very welcoming people. I, you know, I said that, so I'm sure we're going to get some people that say it, and they're probably sitting She's in the when they She's quit, don't come to North Carolina. But I promise you, well, most of the people you run into in North Carolina would be happy to have you there. It's a great state. The people are, I would say, the best part. There's no metric for measuring that. That's just a feeling. That's just a reputation. And that's my experience. Well, All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now, if you're thinking about moving to North Carolina, do a little more research on some of the things I said and see if this place is what you're looking for. Not a bad place to live. All right, everyone. I'll see you on the next video. Be nice to each other. Be nice to each other. <laughs> well, thank you guys for watching if you stayed because I know this video is probably kind of long and yeah, but I thought, oh. I made it before class. Class starts at 11.40. It's 11.37. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Um, I might do some more of these. I don't know. I just decided to because why not? So, yeah. Bye. Okay. So, it is Judges 10, 6 to 7. Again, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. They served the images of Baal. And Ashtoreth, and the gods of Aram, Sidon, Moab, Ammon, and Philistia. They abandoned the Lord and no longer served him at all. So the Lord burned with anger against Israel, and he turned them over to the Philistines and the Ammonites. Yes? Reading. Uh, yeah, I, know. I realized that when he was reading out loud. Just wanted to say also. I'm working on the, the attitude. I didn't mean to come off like that. And because the Israelites forsook the Lord. Oh, this is in here now, my devotion. 
And because the Israelites forsook the Lord and no longer served him, he became angry with them. This verse raises an important question. Is anger sin? If so, how can a loving, sinless God express anger? To explore these questions, we need to understand the moral attributes of God. He is good, loving, compassionate, patient, truthful, faithful, just, and slow to anger. But he does become angry, not in an imperfect human manner, manner but with a righteous indignation against evil. It was righteous indig indignation that moved Jesus to drive the greedy and ungodly out of God's temple. In the same way, after the Israelites returned to idol worship, Return to idol worship. In the same way, after the Israelites returned to idol worship, they suffered the consequences of their sin. God allowed neighboring nations to oppress them for 18 years. And that's Judges 10. God allowed neighboring nations to oppress them for 18 years. Judges 10 8. From the beginning of time, God has revealed his wrath against all forms of wickedness and idolatry. But his disdain, disdain toward evil is also an expression of love for goodness and righteousness. The Apostle Paul taught New Testament believers, In your anger, do not sin. Do not give the evil a foothold. Ephesians 4, 26-27 For us as Christians, it's right to express anger against sin and injustice. For us as Christians, it's right to express anger against sin and injustice. It's wrong to let that anger lead us to sin. Not all anger is sin, but it's an emotion best left to God's control. God, this is the prayer, help me to control my anger, to express it only when standing up for goodness and righteousness. Teach me when and how to be angry so I will not sin. Amen. And that is day 259 of my 360 day devotion. Two hundred and fifty nine. Did I say fifty nine or sixty nine? Hey. I like tea. Bye bye.